12 air attack bases and nine helicopter bases. Back in the 70s, they, the folks in the state organized the aircraft so that they could respond to state lands within 20 minutes, be over state fires, over state lands. And then since those days, we've changed the motors on, on both the helicopters and the, the fixed wing. So now it's allowed us to, to have good coverage over the state. And with that, there's also our, our Forest Service counterpart. They have aircraft out there at, at different bases. They've got neighborhoods of like 12 to 13 helicopter bases and six fixed wing bases, I believe, of which this is one of them, where we have uh, we have our aircraft here and also the AirTac 17, which is my partner right there, Todd White. He's he's from the Forest Service side. So in Region 5, which is what California is known on the Forest Service side, is known as Region 5, and then uh, for Cal Fire, it's north and south. They have a, over the intercom comes in a dispatch and we'll hear everything that goes on in the North State. So if the hatch keys up, we know what's happening as far as aircraft go and movement, what's available yeah. and what is for aircraft. So they'll process uh, the information that we need to actually respond to a fire, how we communicate what the hazards are. It's pretty standard script that we get. We take that, we respond to the fire, and then they also run all of our loads. So they track how much retard we're putting out and all the other aircraft that come in and out and the times of those aircraft. So all the data collection goes. So we usually run about a thousand gallons in there of retardant every day out of the base. And then as our gas comes down, we're able to go up hmm. on retardant. So we will get to the 1200 gallons, but usually only for the last couple of loads, depending on how far we have to fly. Got it. So roughly they got about two hours in the air before they have to refuel, is how it works. And then the retardant coverage, the, how the doors operate, and I'll show you on the computer is, I tell them which coverage level I want on the ground, and it's a based off of a 100 square foot area, so 10 by 10. If I tell them I want a, I want a six, covers level six, means I want six gallons of retardant dispersed in a 100 square foot area. And so the computer is what they set and those doors will open and it bases on head pressure that as the fluid gets less, there's less head pressure, it opens the doors more. Wow. And, and we can close them pretty quickly. So we can let out 100 gallons or we can let out all of it. It's hmm. all how quick we want to operate on the back. The air tankers, are above and what we have to do is we work with the ground we figure out what the fire needs we take the helicopters out of the way we bring the fixed wing down that's called sequencing okay the faster that we're able to make that work the faster we're able to get lines around the fire to help the ground crews put the fire out hmm. so there's a lot of things that go into that uh, Like our pilots as a whole in the group are very, very exceptional pilots, uh, very capable pilots. And we have what we call initial attack carded pilots, which means they don't need me to respond to a fire today. Um, it's, a, it's an added benefit for safety and whatnot and for um, coordination with the ground. But these guys are trained to where they could take off from this base, respond to a fire, talk, communicate with the ground, and still be able to drop and control a fire without supervision overhead. Yep, it's tough for, for them because again they're single pilot mm -hmm. and it's it's um, it's hard to do radio frequency changes and tone frequency changes when you're up flying and whatnot. But they're, they're able to perform it. Um, they do some things to account for it. So this is the most task saturated job probably in the fire service is a single pilot air tanker. Because they're they, what they have to do is um, it's not as simple as there's no we're not dropping ordnance so. There's no crosshairs here. If you want the retardant to be dropped, 
I have to describe the line to them. They have to under, they have to figure out how they're going to line up with that line up from up above. Then they go low level, and they have to judge what we call drift. So just because the line's here with retardant and the wind's blowing, they may have to set the line off to count for the drift over, um, or if they're pushing into wind or uh, against wind. Uh, um, effects of wind. As far as downdrafts occur, the terrain, exiting, where they're going to get the plane to exit if something happens, like they have a catastrophic failure of a motor or, or they hit a, a drone, anything of that nature. And here's the drop computer we were talking about. So this would set up the coverage level that I'm asking for here. This activates it. And then line just means everything goes off of a button. So what they have the ability to do is that red button, as long as they hold it down, is how much retardant that they will drop. Wow. And all of their skill is uh, is 100% them. There's nothing in here that helps them drop retardant on time. It's all how they understand the speed of the aircraft and the capabilities that, uh, of uh, their experiences in the past. If that makes sense? Absolutely. <laughs> so it's all through their training. There's nothing in here that's going to help them line up. It's their skill.